Hello, welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. Well, I've finally taken a look at John Scalzi's red shirts, and I thought I might as well give my thoughts on the book. And if you noticed that I didn't say that I'd finished the book, then you might be able to guess my thoughts. In short, I didn't enjoy it. And I'd say I didn't enjoy it for reasons that are definitely a matter of personal taste. The book is a dark comedy that is set in a universe that is something of a pastiche of classic Star Trek. It follows the lower-ranking officers of a ship that is a serial numbers filed off version of the USS Enterprise. And, well, lots of them die on away teams, and people start noticing this. And ultimately the book ends up leaning hard on the fourth wall as the characters kind of figure out why people end up why the lower-ranking officers, the security officers, um, general rank-and-file science crew members end up fighting it. And again, if it, this, this is, of course, assuming it doesn't break all the way through the fourth wall. Now, the reasons why I didn't enjoy this book are kind of complicated and relate to how I like my dark comedies. To be clear, I do enjoy dark comedies. I enjoy films like Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, or Snatch, which are dark gangster, dark comedy gangster films. I enjoyed Shaun of the Dead, which is a dark comedy horror film, or specifically zombie film. I enjoy them because they are dark comedies in a genre that is already dark. Most gangster films, if the main characters make it out alive, they're usually not better off than they are when they started. Otherwise, they're in prison or ostracized from everyone they knew and loved, assuming that they're, they're dead, or, for that matter, the main characters are dead in the first place. Zombie films, again, it's they're set in a, a world that is undergoing a kind of apocalypse. Um, they, it's, I mean, most zombie films, if the main character is dead or likely to die, um... Oftentimes, characters get picked off one by one through the course of the story, all that sort of thing. They're dark films, and thus the dark comedy kind of tempers that a bit. Uh, but the worst that worst that can happen with the dark comedy, as far as with the comedic elements, is it, they might make the film a little lighter because of the comedy. But it doesn't make the film not dark. There's still the darkness there. There's still the sense of things going bad. Um... There's still the sense that these are characters in a bad place, but there's bad people in a bad place. When you put a dark comedy in a lighter genre or a lighter work, it comes across to me personally as feeling more mean-spirited, even if this isn't the authorial intent or anything like that. This leads to my problem with Red Shirts, as it's a dark comedy set in the world of classic Trek. Classic Trek, and to a certain degree also Next Generation, are set in a version of the Star Trek universe where, I mean, a version, that their Star Trek universe is a place where the future is so bright that you gotta wear shades. Every humanity has progressed a great deal. It is well above and beyond what it is now. It's a better place to live in than the world we live, na live in now. Yes, there's risk and danger and space travel, but it's not... It's not like how to put this. It's it's not it's different than everyday life. It's the people who took these jobs knew the risks when they took this job. On the other hand, um, I mean, another way there are dark places and, and dark ways you can look at the Star Trek universe where you can fit a dark comedy in there and it wouldn't come and it would fit in how I like my dark comedy. Deep Space Nine and Voyager are all fairly dark works. They are even kind of um, Enterprise as well. Uh, Deep Space Nine is more has less of the black and white of earlier Trek and has more of a sense of shades of gray between the whole situation with Bajor early on and how they're recovering from a bloody civil not a bloody civil war but a bloody uprising and revolution to throw out a oppressive government and how the Bajoran and Cardassian governments interact with each other. The Dominion War gets 
pretty dark at places. I'm not going to say there's no hope, but it's the glimmer of hope isn't as bright as it is in the other Trek series. Similar sorts of things with Enterprise, particularly with some of the stuff with the Temporal Cold War, and for that matter, uh, and for that matter, other um, elements of the Titan, the Expanse arc. Abrams' Trek, definitely very dark. It's a world where there are all sorts of planet-destroying superweapons out there. Um, now, I mean, Vulcan gets destroyed. And the Vulcan people, the ones who the ones who weren't off, were off planet, or managed to escape, are scattered to, for lack of a better term, the four winds. Um, we have terror. We we have like massive attacks on Earth and catastrophes, causing untold loss of life. It's a much more difficult and rough place to live in. Um, it's still better than what we ha- than I was what I call modern Earth, but it's. It's a little rougher. But classic Trek isn't quite like that. And thus, when the dark com- when you introduce the dark comedy, it doesn't quite mesh for me. Again, it's just for me personally. So, I mean, if you like the book, there's nothing wrong with you as a person. I'm not criticizing people who enjoy the book. And certainly the book has its audience. It won the Nebula Award. I would certainly consider it a strong contender for the Hugo Award. But still, I didn't enjoy the book. And I can't make it my pick for the Hugo. And again, no offense to John Scalzi. I've enjoyed his previous work, particularly with Fuzzy Nation. And I'll read plenty of his other books. I need to get around to reading Old Man's War. And I will certain, I certainly suspect I'll enjoy that. But Red Shirts ain't for me. So... I still have Captain Vorpatrol's Alliance to finish, which I have the audiobook right here. And once I'm done with that one, I will give my thoughts on that and give my final pick for what book I would choose to or vote for in the Hugo Award nomination, Hugo Awards for Best Novel. So, if you enjoyed this episode or enjoyed my my other programs, please subscribe to this channel. And if you enjoyed this episode in particular, please give me a thumbs up. I'll happily respond to any comments or whatever that you have down in the comments. And I look forward to well, well, seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. Mm